Well, things are very interesting coming into the OK Senior Final. It's definitely going to be an intriguing challenge now. I would say that the track is no longer wet. It is drying, and that is going to make things very interesting coming into this final race. Every single cart on the grid has wet tires, but again, this comes down to tire pressures. Who's going to get it right? Who's going to get it wrong? And if there's not going to be any more heavy rain throughout the course of this final, it suddenly becomes about driver skill and prowess. Who has the patience? Who has the discipline? the tenacity and the hunger to go for the victory in this OK final. Our champions of the future in the Euro Series are the steel ring at Trinet in the Czech Republic. There are so many big name contenders who will try to go for the victory. From the very front of the starting grid, the man who was the fastest of all in time qualifying, Gabriel Gomez of Brazil in the CRG. He fought back with tenacious audacity in the superheat to reclaim his place at the top spot. And he needed to do it too, because his closest rival on the other side of the grid managed to come through to win his superheat and would have displaced him had he done so. So Kian Nakamura Berta, the young man who is actually wearing his wet helmet, which is plain white for this one, so you'll have to keep an eye on him in the Prima Racing Machine. A very tough mission for him as he tries to continue to battle away for supremacy. It'll be a tough race for him, that's for sure, as he continues to fight for the top spot. But after his brilliant feisty drive in the previous superheat, the energy course man starting on the second row of the starting grid, Thomas Stodgermanis, has suddenly fought his way back into position. So he is going to be a factor, as is the Italian Sebastiano Pavan. The three-minute board goes up, and he holds it aloft on the start-finish straight to let everybody know that they do not have long here on the starting grid. Slightly delayed by the wet running of the race. Third row of the grid is Alex Powell of Jamaica. The, alongside him, Finn McLaughlin for the VDK Racing Team. Nathan Tai in the Sony Kart. Jan Poshrovsky in the Tony Kart. And then giving chase, Rene Lammers in the Paralin and Gustav Wisniewski on the Forza Expert. There is Thomas Stolchimanis. A great chance for him to fight his way to the final on the top step of the podium. There are so many big names in this one, but with this being all about the discipline of a drying track, this now comes down to, as I said before, tire pressures and who is gonna have the best calculated run to the top spot. There is still a tiny bit of rain in the air, but it's not exactly falling anymore. So this is gonna be a race that will churn the tires all the way through from the outset. And drivers like Sebastiano Pavan, Alex Powell, and Finn McLaughlin are going to have to work hard to get themselves up to the spot, top spot. Anthony, this is going to be a very tough OK Senior final. Tough it is, I think, an understatement for this one, Jake, as, like you say, the track conditions are going to be very challenging in this one. A drying circuit as the rain has stopped falling, and now the wet tyres will go to work in trying to clear a dry line in this one. It's going to be an interesting final, a long final as well. Remember, 25 laps for this one. And we are going to see drivers do battle quite fiercely in this one. What's going to work out, the inside line or the outside line? It's both of them has worked so far this weekend. But Gomez will start on pole position with Naka Roberta alongside. But keep an eye on drivers behind as well who want to make the moves. The one driver who we've been keeping an eye on throughout this entire weekend, Joe Turney, last year's champion, of course, who has been fighting his way through the field, starts this one on the seventh row, P. 14. He's going to be pushing his way through the field in this one, as well as Rene Lammers as well. Keep an eye on Lammers, the 277, two, uh, two, starting this one on the uh, fifth row in P9. He is a driver who has certainly made that parallel cart work well and has pushed through the field as well. Nathan Tai as well, another driver who has worked well, but Pal. Again, another driver, also Powell, not using his regular yellowed liveried helmet. He's got the blue liveried helmet on, his wet helmet on. So, again, there'll be a bit of a change-up with some of the drivers you will see out there. There is Ross Upton, the judge of fact, at the start. And he'll be judging the fact that this race is about to get going. Certainly will, but this is going to be the toughest race of the weekend without any stretch of the imagination. Not only is it the longest, but just consider this, 25 laps on a circuit that the drivers have not raced an OK Senior Final on before, mm. in these conditions, which are drying, not wet or dry, on wet tyres that are uh, brand spanking new, this is going to be a race to even get to the finish, never mind to win it. Gabriel Gomez and Kian Nakamura Berta, Thomas Stodgermanis and Sebastiano Pavan, Alex Powell and Finn McLaughlin, Nathan Tai and Jan Petrovsky, René Lammers and Gustav Isnevsky from Jakub Kamenik and Guillaume Buzar, Thomas Stravan and Joe Turney, Enzo Tarman Nitschkul and Alva Simosvada, 
Jules Caranta and Len Noyes from Simone Bianco and Miguel Costa, Matthew Konagi and David Walter, Marek Skriven, Arthur Poulain, Chu Yan Pu, Mark Dubnitsky, Emilio Koivisto, Alexander Begunovic, Teresa Babichkova, who does not appear to be starting the final, Nasha Tunion, Maciek Gladish, Matthias Morgato, Keanu Blum, Ian Eichmanns, Jor Bergström and Martin Molnar. And I do believe there's been a problem off the start it for is. Jacob Kamenic. He is. He's not able to get the cart going. The mechanic was pushing it halfway down the main straight, but it's back at the pit lane entrance and they cannot get it started. He's still in the cart. But no, he's getting out. That's oh. it. Jakob Kamenic, his chances of taking the win. That's devastating, isn't it? On his home track as well. Well, disaster for the young Czech driver. He was easily the highest ranked driver in the OK Senior category this week in uh, Senior, mixing it up with Teresa Babichkova all through the week. Sadly, it appears that Teresa not able to compete today. Update on Teresa Babichkova. Spoke to the team earlier on. Uh, she's got a bit of back pain from an injury in car racing and the oh circuit dear. as well. Been playing havoc with that one. So, uh, oh, so she that's has basically been she has tired. Yeah, I'm not, at all, I'm not at all surprised. That was a bad accident last year that uh, happened in uh, her car racing campaign. So unfortunate that she's had to sit out this one. But hopefully, sitting out may give her the chance to be fit and ready in time for the European Championship here two weeks from now. That's the question, isn't it? So. Here we go then, drivers will get themselves lined up in there. Like you're saying, that track, this track has dried out relatively quickly, hasn't it? There are still patches of the circuit where there's water going through the tyre treads quite well, but within about five laps, this will be a drying circuit when if it was uh, a car race meeting, you'd be considering pitting for slick tyres. Of mm. course, in karting, you can't do that. No, you can't. You've got to stay on the tyres that you've chosen to go on. And of course, when the race is declared wet by the race director, you have the open choice of going for wet tyres. You can remain on slicks if you feel like it's going to dry out or anything like that. But if it is declared a dry race, you cannot use wet tool. I didn't, Obviously. I didn't see any, but well, this is the thing. I didn't see anybody down there on slicks. No. I think everybody has just gone for the cautious option. Obviously, yeah. But the problem is then, within five, six laps, you know, there are going to be certain parts of the circuit that will be wet, but there are going to be a lot of others that are just going to be bone dry, half distance. And we are racing at Trinich in the steel ring. And it's a good start for Gomez. Nakamura Berta slots into second without issue. Alex Powell trying to come around oh, the outside. Oh, and he's gone. Oh, Powell has no. gone. Powell has gone after oh. contact with Sebastian and Pavan. And there's several others going off as well. But Powell and Pavan collide on the first turn. Finn McLaughlin looks like he's in there as well. Oh, a disaster. It's the first time we've seen it coming together actually at that turn on the track. And well, my goodness, but Nakamura Berta's there in second. Stolchamanis, I think, is still there in third. The championship leader is gone. He's desperately oh. trying to push start his cut downhill to pirouette it around. But Alex Powell, the championship leader, is out along with Stolchamanis. Oh, no, sorry, Stolchamanis has kept going. It's Pavan and McLaughlin, as well as Guillaume Bouzard. And we've had one of the DPKs come off the road as well. Yeah, I'm not quite sure who that is. And as a Pirillard. Well. And a Pirillard as well. And it's heavily damaged as well, that uh, DPK car. That's Alexander Begunovic and I think Joel Bergstrom as well. So two big names there. Alex Powell has got going again. Okay. He has managed to restart it, but he's right down at the back as out in front. There is Alex Powell as Gabriel Gomez leads Nakamura Berta and Stolchamanis over the line. What a chaotic start. Well, absolute drama. Yellow flag still through turn one. So no overtaking will be permitted as the marshals do another fantastic job of clearing the track. Green flags once again as they exit out of there. And Nakamura Berta all over the back here of Gabriel Gomez for the battle for the lead. Now there's another incentive for Alex Powell to get going again because if this race were to be stopped now, he could claim that he's back in the race. He's not out of the race, so he can restart it. And potentially, yep. if they can make changes, then he can come through from the back of the grid. So that's the reason Alex Powell was so determined to get back into the race before that happened. So Gomez now from Nakamura Berta, but Alex Powell has come through in 29th position, and he is charging his way back into contention if he can. Exactly that. Also, he could fight for the fastest lap and gain that extra uh, championship point as well. Eyes on this battle for the race leaders down the inside change and a switch round between the two of them. Naka Roberta down the inside, but Gomez fighting back instantly. We've not seen oh! that happen. And back down the inside goes Naka Roberta. And Stolchimanis goes through as well. Gomez no. retakes the lead. Oh, my goodness. This is four or five overtakes within two, three corners. And they're side by side going in towards turn one. No, he can't do it. As they go into yellow flags, they've got to be careful here. Switch Naka over. Roberta. Now, where's the green flag? His Stolchimanis is coming through on the inside line as well. Now, the green flag. There is th the green flag. I think Nakamura Berta got it under yellow flags. What? Do they have to wait until they pass a green flag Absolutely before they can start they do. overtaking again? Absolutely, they do. 
Oh what? my goodness, has Nakamura Berta just taken the lead of the race under yellows? I think it's being investigated. Well, we'll have to see what happens, but for the time being, he leads the way. The yellow flags in the meantime now clear at turn one. Gomez there in second. I'm not seeing any protests from Gomez here, but Stolchimanis still there in third. Look how much the rest of the pack's closed up now. Ties there, Lammer, Stroud, Turney, all there as well. Turney's under pressure from Tarvanichkal just behind her. Those two are getting a, a little bit close for comfort as well. But like you say, drama in these finals. They're really shaking it up this weekend. And this is what we were talking about. Look how quickly the track is drying. They're all yeah. on wet tires. They're going to have absolutely no grip in about three laps. They've barely got any grip as it is. Look, oh. they're on wet tires and there's no water running through the no. treads. That's the problem. So there's the replay of the start. Watch Powell in the blue helmet. He bangs wheels with Stolchimanis, comes back across. Pavan is there and Pavan gets on the curb into the side of Powell. Bang! Yeah, just the understeer. Couldn't turn. He was full lock there. How lucky was Stolchimanis? Oh, very lucky. He, ju he just avoided contact. Guillaume Buzar has gone as well. And there goes his front fairing with a massive check-in from one of the DPKs. That was the DPK that pulled over at the uh, second hairpin as well later on in the lap. So heavy rear axle that damage. Was, it was Keanu Blum who yeah. went into the side of Buzar there. So big problems for Keanu Blum. So Nakamura Berta leading from Gomez, Stolchimanis, Ty, Lammers, Straven, Turney, Tarvanichkul, Peshrovsky and Simasvara with plenty of race still to go. But look how slow it is. There's no grip in these wet tyres at all now. Well, Powell with the fastest lap of the race, so he's definitely going oh. for that idea as Poulain dives down the inside there. That's uh, on David Volta for about P16. Glad he's got a good move. Stolchimanis going for Gomez. No chance. Round the outside comes Gomez oh. to hold the position. But Nakamura Berta will be stretching away. So if there is an investigation, all he's got to do essentially is pull clear. And if he does get a penalty, he might have enough in the tank to win it anyway. We'll have to see as the race goes on. A bit wide there for Stolchimanis as Nathan Time pot uh, potentially having a move here into the first hairpin. Not able to get anything done there as the drivers concertina back up once more as they go down the hill. Lots of drivers taken to the inside kerb. And you saw their Lammers really latching onto that inside kerb as well as they tried to negotiate their way round that corner and a huge dive there from Nathan Ty on Stolchimanis for P3. Gets it done and a perfect example of how to get a move down the inside in these wet conditions. Holds on to the spot and Stolchimanis uh, uh, or Straubin, so, no, Stolchmana, sorry, it will have to hold on to that position. He's got the close company now of Turney just behind, who's now going to try and go for the move as well. Can't get it done as the rest of the field now really closing in. And Lammers in the background, little mistake there as he clipped that inside curve, now loses momentum on the pack in front. This race now essentially becomes a lottery because the circuit is drying out big time. There comes the move from, is that Straubin? I think it's Straubin, yeah. And then Turney goes with him. As I was saying, this race essentially becomes a lottery now because you can see there's no spray coming off the tyres. The circuit is not wet enough for these full wet tyres and they've got to keep it going now for another 20 Ooh. laps. Look at Turney sliding around, trying desperately to get past his teammate. He goes Ooh. the long way round, but look, that's where he can find grip because that's yeah. where the standing water still is. Yeah, exactly. You can see the rooster tails coming up when they do take that wider line going through the carousel and back up the hill. So yeah, that outside line may be working. It looks absolutely terrifying because it looks like they're about to skate straight off the circuit, but no, then it suddenly grips up and then they shoot out of the corner. So uh, Turney certainly making that car work well around this uh, 1200 meter circuit. Action still happening though, as like you say, Nakamura Roberta now the gap, 1.6 seconds further back in the field, biggest mover. Look at that, Belgium's Ian Eggman's 21 positions gained as Powell sets another fastest lap of the race. This is exactly the kind of conditions Ian Eggman's needed. He needed a variable to change things up. Let's have a look at the oh, replay. This is what happened dear. with Blum. That, no, that's an IPK, I think. It is an IPK. It's a Praga going straight off the road. It's the 231 that drifted off. That's Emilie Coivisto. So Coivisto drifting into the barrier there. But it has already been replaced by the Marshals. So Nakamura Berta leads. Gomez second. Then Ty, Straven, Turney, Stolchimanis, Lamas and Tarvanichkul. Nakamura Berta set to take the lead of the Euro Series with Alex Powell in second position if it stays like this. Two very different racing lines there by Straven and Turney. The two teammates who are locked in battle at the moment and under investigation now. There it is! Is Kian Nakamura Berta, the 2-6-0. I have a feeling they may have caught oh, him back to Robert oh. Turney! Turney slides in on Straven! Contact with his teammates as they go into the uh, hairpin at the first S's. And no protest so far. <laughs> a look over the shoulder from Straubin, but Turney was determined to make that move work. Well, would you argue with Joe Turney? I mean, he's your teammate. Would you want that ignominy <laughs> in your own awning? I don't think I would. Oh, dear me. Well, 
Again, this race far from over. We're only on lap six of 25 around this circuit. Here's a replay then. This is Nakamura Berta on Gomez. Now watch this. This is the move he initially gets to move up into the lead. Gomez comes straight back at him. Yeah. They squabble around. He goes down the drop. Then he cuts back. Gomez defends. This is how it all happened. Nakamura Berta launches for the inside line. Watch Gomez. Stolchimanis goes for it. Gomez finds grip and pace on the outside on the wet. Slides his way back in on Nakamura Berta. They go side by side. Now watch. They're going into the yellow flag area here. Gomez holds the position. There's the yellow flag. Nakamura Berta is going to go round the outside. Gomez is going to tippy toe. Nakamura Berta cuts back in. Where's the green flag? There isn't one because it's round the next corner. And Nakamura Berta has sustained that overtake and has held the lead. So unfortunately, I think he may be banged to rights. Possibly so. I mean, it's tough, isn't it? It's it a is, tough call. It is a tough call. Like you say, there are some smart people who will be working on that one and will make the decision on that one. So Nakamura Berta, question mark, lose. What warning flag for Joe Turney. Oh, dear warning me. Warning flag for Joe Turney. Now, that comes with a five-second penalty in the Champions of the Future. So Joe Turney, for that move on Stroudman, has been given a five-second penalty. A warning flag goes his way. Wow, look at that. And, well, I don't... Well, I'd be curious to see how he's going to react to that one because he makes well, the move. he's going to make the overtake. He's going to make the overtake on Nathan Ty. So he moves up into third place. He's going to come around the corner and see that. What's his reaction going to be? This is Absolutely Joe nothing. This is Ice Joe Turney in wrecking ball mode, isn't he? He's yes. just storming through. He's like the missile in Mario Kart, just storming his way through the traffic. And he's using that outside line. Look, there's plenty of grip there because the water is still down. If he can surge his way through past Gomez, then catch up to Nakamura and Berta and pass him and get five seconds clear, that's all fair and game. Tony could win this. He could indeed. So he's on the charge here at the moment. Gomez is the next target. And look how much he's just closing in. He certainly knows how to drive in the wet here at the steel ring. And the track ever drying. The dry line starting to become a little bit more prominent. Of course, the track's still completely soaking, but it is drying. No more rain is falling here in the Czech Republic. And back down it. the inside already. Look at that. How on earth has he closed the gap already? <laughs> Instantly going for the move is turning. But of course, he will see. Now watch the, from the, the outside. He's yeah. going to have so much grip down the hill. No, he's not going to make it work there. He's going to try again around the outside, but he's not going to have the momentum to get it done. He might get the switch back here, though. Looks to the inside, he's there. and he's done it. Yes, yeah, Stralvan takes on Nathan Ty as Ty blocks that position oh my to goodness. out of the final corner. So now Turney's up into second place now. He's got to try and pull away. He knows that wet line, and he's making that wet line work here. Can he close that gap? But of course, the question mark is on here in Nakamura Berta. We've not seen anything for that yet, but he is under investigation. Lots is going to happen in this race. But Still, plenty of time to go. Look at the way that Turney's able to drive away from Gomez. He yeah. just takes a wider line, gets water through the tyres, cools the tyres down. He's got so much better purchase. Stralvan now making the commitment on Ty. Stolkmanis oh. could get them both. Three wide off the hairpin, and they bang wheels, Ty and Stralvan. They come into the next hairpin. Who's going to get the faster line out? It's going to be Stralvan, but he's going to come into the compression. Oh, that's brave from Stralvan. Oh, great stuff from these three drivers. How on earth did Stralvan not get caught up in a sandwich between those two? through the uh, first of the S's, but he gets away with it and now drives away from the rest of them. Astolchimane has got tie in the same red, so the energy course moves in front of the Sony car. Terrific racing from these three. Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff so far. And it's been action of plenty. There's your race leader, Nakamura Roberto, who's and, clear. And Turney is catching him, yeah, he is getting that gap down. It took another 10th out of him just in that last sector alone. So. That really is closing in. Here's still Ty on the back of Stolchimanis. That battle still rages on. All the meanwhile, Lammers and Tarvanichko are still there just behind. They're also scrapping for position as Tarvanichko takes the wider line, potentially going for that switch back just behind in shot. And they've also got the close company of Vinevsky just there as well in P9. Perovsky rounds out the top 10 and still big movers coming in as Zekman's still there in P11. 23 positions he's up now in this race. The rest of the big movers as well. Nacho Tunion. And uh, Mateus Mugato also into P20, 12 positions. Getting to the spin. Oh, it's a spin from Ty, is it? No, it's no, Vinevsky. It's, it's Vinevsky who goes round. The Forza Motorsport team has been having an absolute disaster here for the Forza Racing team, I should say. Certainly on Saturday, it's been yeah. a bit difficult, hasn't it? But he's straight back on the horse. Look at that, straight up the inside to retake the position there on Simone Bianco. Wow, dear me. Oh, no, who's that going slow and wide and off the track? Uh, at the top of the course. Yes, someone's broken down. Now, who is that that's gone straight on? Gomez has come through, so has Stralvan, Stolchimanis, Ty, Lammers, Peshrovsky. So someone up in the top 10 has completely come off the road, up at the top of the hill. It it's was Tarvanichko. 
Oh my goodness, the Red Bull driver, Tom Nitschkel, has had a breakdown at the top of the hill, and his race is over. Well, drama again in this race. Well, Alex Powell, his teammate, is trying to fight his way back into contention. He's just moved up to 25th position with the fastest lap of the race as well, a 106.1 for Alex Powell. That's half a second quicker than the race leader, Kia Nakamura Berta. So Powell is just trying to gain as many places as possible to bank as many championship points as possible to get the gap down to Kia Nakamura Berta, essentially. But Nakamura Berta is having a great race up front, but Turney is absolutely eating the road to him. Oh, dear me. I mean, can this circuit stop spitting drivers out left right and center there was the move that got joe turney that warning flag now both drivers still in the race and turney really pushing it on there's a bit of contact here that was how vinevsky got turned around it, it was, was actually Tarvinichko. from Tarvinichko, and i think that caused the front wheel to come off because instantly into the uh, next couple of corners he then pulled the car off at the side of the circuit, so I reckon that may have punctured the front tyre, if not broken the wheel. Yeah, it's been very devastating indeed for Enzo Tarvanichkil. He'll have to fight back two weeks' time from now in the European Championships. And, of course, to keep his champion to the future campaign on track. Oh, and there's an incident on the start-finish line. Sorry, Jake, two cuts off. The 246 is one of them. That is the Tony car. That is after Poulain, and Chu Yanpu is the other one. The Prima team is absolutely devastated in this race. Just outside our commentary box, you can't see it on your picture. You can see there just in the background of your shot there, uh, it being sorted out. Both drivers out of the race. Crucially, though, both drivers OK. Joe Turney, however, has closed that gap up quite considerably. It's now eight tenths of a second. The battle for the lead, both drivers with a penalty. Or, but, well, uh, no, I, I'll correct myself on that one. Nakaroberta Roberta under investigation. Turney with the warning flag and already with that five second time penalty during the race. So question mark over these top two. And now look at that, Nakamura Berta really struggling to get the cart stopped on the exit of the turn. And there is Joe Turney within half a second. Look at the amount of time that Turney's going to make up from round the outside. He's just going to surge in behind Nakamura Berta. And then he will have, if he gets past him on this lap, 11 and a half laps to pull out five seconds. He's already pulled out 3.4 on Gomez. So if he just keeps it going and if Nakamura Berta gets the penalty, Joe Turney is almost certainly going to go for the win. He has to wait. He's patient. Picks his moment, has to think about this because Nakamura Berta is going to defend as much as possible. Turney goes for the slow in, fast out approach. Joe Turney right in behind Kian Nakamura Berta, hunting for the lead, hunting for the win. He knows that Nakamura Berta will be under investigation, but he doesn't know what the penalty is going to be. So he can't assume. He's just got to go for it and try and pull five seconds clear. But Joe Turney knows that that man is the leader of the race. He goes wide, slingshots out, tries to cut back in for the inside line. Wait for it. He'll get a little bit of water on the tyres to cool it down. Nakamura Berta will drift out wide and Turney will take the lead by tripping over the curves and holds the lead of the race. That Joe Turney takes it. That is three times he's done that very move at that one corner. He's clearly been studying the wet line around this track because he is making it work absolutely beautiful. He takes the lead of the final here with that five-second time penalty. Remember, he qualified in 51st place this weekend at the start of it. He's been fighting his way all the way back through the heat. We thought he was going to ruin his tyres as he gained position after position over the weekend, and now he leads... And Alpha Poulain gets a warning flag as well. So that incident on the start-finish line was checked by the uh, race control there and as deemed to be the driver at fault. Wow. And, uh, but yeah, again, Joe Tenney here, a ton of performance. And he's got half a second clear already of Nakamura Berta. He's got plenty of time to extend that to five seconds. He might even have a second by the end of the lap. Here it is again. Nakamura Berta, the conventional line. Turney slow in, fast out. Nakamura Berta drifts wide. Now let's look at Turney. A oh, lot of curb, that, though. Yeah, a really lot of curb. Corner. He's got to be careful because you don't want to get... Oh, Straubin's out. Straubin's out by the look of it. Thomas Straubin has fallen from the brain. Now, he was in fourth position. So Thomas Straubin has dropped out of the race in the first sector. And we've got another warning flag. It's the 246. Oh, no, that is after Poulain already, isn't it? Yep. But we've got a retirement. And it's Thomas Straubin. He has not come through in the first sector. So Straubin has suddenly fallen away. And I'm afraid that's game over for Straubin now as well. It is indeed. Well, let's think about this then. So, Turney at the moment is extending that gap. It's already to 1.2 seconds. He needs to open up a five-second advantage here. And all, all he's going to do is just keep going. Well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, he's certainly doing what he needs to do here. A dominant drive over the weekend. How Look, does he do it? 
I don't know how on earth he finds it from 51st in qualifying. There is Thomas Straven's card. Ah, that's so, such a uh, shame. Fourth position gone for the Belgian, his teammate. But Joe Turney, how does he bring himself back from adversity every single time? He is just the master. We've got another cut off as well. It looks like a Forza. Uh, it is is the that Wisniewski? No, it's the 212. You're right. So that, that is Wisniewski. It, it is Wisniewski. <sighs> what is it with Forza racing? They were so quick at the beginning of the week. And then today, it's just been an absolute nightmare. Ries van Langendonk. And then we also had uh, Lewis Werrell spinning off in the lead in the final. And now in the OK final. It's Gustav Isnevsky that's gone as well. Bitter disappointment for Forza Racing. Indeed. Well, the day goes from bad to worse, really, in the superheats and finals. But eyes on still the front. Turn his gap. It's not increasing by a long way. It's 1.7. But crucially, he is 4.2 away from Gomez. Now, remember, if Nakamura Roberta's investigation comes through, and he gets a penalty. Essentially, Joe could still win this one if he can break five seconds from Gomez. Now, let's talk about lap times a little bit, because yep. if this was a dry race, the chequered flag would be coming out by now. Yes. And we are 16 laps through, 25 laps in total. So it's still a very tough race for everybody out there, and they are still going to have to push these tyres, which are not suited to this circuit anymore. But then it's that fine line, that biting point now, between dry and wet. Mm. Slicks probably wouldn't work any better than no, the wets currently no, are no, either. No. no. Especially around a circuit like this, you'll be fighting for traction all the way around. And, of course, with the undulations and the changes as well, you're going to need that traction. And they are struggling with traction, like you say, at the moment, because the track is just uh, damp. Looking down, and uh, all is well there. Just ch checking something there for Engman, who is now up into P7. Yes, he is. Can we stress that? 27 <laughs> positions gained for the Belgian for Ward Racing. Yeah, Ian Eichmann is having the mother of all comebacks here, and he isn't done yet. He's still got eight laps to try and make a, a, a charge on the top eight. He's just managed to get past Jan Petrovsky. Petrovsky not terribly happy about it, but the Ward Racing team have not had much to smile about so far this week. Ian Eichmann's maybe about to put the smile back on their faces at the end of the day. Uh, just looking at Joe Turney's lead over Nakamura Berta, that's up to two seconds. His advantage over Gomez, if Nakamura Berta were to get a penalty, has just gone above five seconds. Mm. Turney may have done enough here. He may have done enough if something happens to Nakamura Berta Indeed, yeah. in a uh, post-race. So, it's still, the race is still on here, really, despite the fact that they're not close on circuit. Stolchimanis, we've not spoken about him in a while, he's still there in P4, and there was a moment for Jules Caranta down the inside, and again, ooh, big, big moment there. Caranta just able to hold on to it, actually gaining a position from that as well, so he moves up. Where is Caranta right now? He's in P14, so I suspect that was the recovering power. Alex Powell, is it P15? He is in P15, I can't believe it. Alex Powell, having spun off on the first lap after contact with Pavan, Alex Powell got going again, and he's now in 15th position, and he's got time to get into the top 10. Alex Powell is 24 seconds off the lead, but he only needs to make up about five more seconds to get into the top 10. He could do this. Alex Powell could go from dead last at the first corner to 10th position in the end of the final. That shows you how dedicated, how committed the Jamaican is to getting this result. And this is such a demonstration of the kind of triumph and adversity that he has to juggle over the course of a race week. But I tell you what, Alex Powell, you will never find a more determined cookie out there. Excellent. And he'll have to work a little bit harder on that one because he still sits second in the virtual championships in his current position with 94 championship points from Nakamura Roberta's 111 points. Obviously, Nakamura Roberta there in P2 if he drops any more positions, which I doubt he will because he's still about three seconds clear of Gomez. Um, yeah, there's still a long way to go in this race, isn't there? We've not even hit the 20th lap yet. No, indeed. This is lap 20, and so it's going to be tricky to see just how much more time can Joe Turney gain on Kia Nakamura Berta, because even the wet spots around the circuit that Joe Turney was gaining advantage from have suddenly ceased, and his lap times are not getting that much faster than anybody else around him now. Alex Powell is actually gaining on Joe Turney in terms of lap times, but he's quite a long way down in terms of the pace. There is Alex Powell. Now, 14th position, quite frankly, is unbelievable, considering that he was off on the grass on lap one. Here he goes again, dives through on the inside of Nacho Tunion. Thank you very much. I'll move into 13th place. This is incredible from Alex Powell. It's a very determined drive, isn't it, as he just pushes that Bremer cart to the ragged edge, using all the track available and a little bit more. 
and just driving away from the rest of the field, like I say, up several positions. So Here's this the is replay of the start. This is how it happened. Now watch Alex Powell on the right of your screen. Blue helmet, red Prima car. Bit of contact there. And then Pavan comes into the same bit of breathing space. He gets out of his way, goes onto the curbs, and it just drops Understood. him into Powell's path. There was nothing Powell could do about it. Nothing Pavan could do about it either. And then poor Finn McLaughlin has nowhere to go. He goes off the road as well. But Alex Powell, look, he's in the grass on lap one. It took him 30 more seconds to get going again. And here he is in 13th position. This is the mother of all comebacks from Alex Powell. It really is, because he's right, like I say, edge of the circuit, out of the cart, the rest of the field's gone. And, you know, still gets it done. This is the yellow flag incident. Now, now. we need to look at this again. He's in yellow flag zone right now. Where's the green? There is no green. But Nakamura Roberta has gone for the move and he gets in front. But they're past the incident. They're past the incident, but they cannot go back to racing again until the green flag, which is there. That's the key factor. That's what they've got to investigate. We'll leave that to the stewards and race control. Gilles Carant has picked up a warning flag now. Oh. Gilles Carant has got five seconds penalty added to his tally, and he has dropped out of the top 10, unfortunately. Yeah. So that just makes things go from bad to worse for Gilles Carant. Yeah, he's down in 15th place, and another five seconds added onto that. would see him probably drop down to about P20, maybe even P22. So we're on lap 22 of 25 now. The sky's darkened once again. Oh, that would be even worse, though. Because think about it, those tyres are now burnt almost that to boy, a slick. Yeah. And if the rain comes back again now, they'll have even less grip to deal with. That would be interesting, but I think it's going to hold off for the time being. This is the battle for sixth place. This is Rene Lammers and Jan Petrovsky who are battling for that one. They're just inside the top ten as they're scrapping away as they head down compression in towards it. Oh, look at the sparks that came out from underneath Lammers there. Again, that's just showing how much these cuts do compress as they go down that corner. And it just is fantastic to see a very challenging circuit. And like I say, it's been a challenge for a lot of these drivers. There's Turney, though, going on to lap 23. The gap now 6.3 seconds to Gomez. 3.3 for Nakamura Berta. He hasn't quite done enough to be guaranteed the victory, has he? No. So it would all depend on the investigation for Nakamura Berta, which we know is coming. Gomez is six seconds back. Do you know what? There's a very distinct possibility that Gabriel Gomez sat in third position could still win this. I mean, he's a second behind Turney, yes. But if he manages to gain that in the last two or three laps, if Nakamura gets a penalty and Turney's got that warning flag, Gomez could still win this final. No, exactly. This is still heating up to be a race. Um, just keeping an eye further down the order. Alex Powell now back up to 13th place on that one. Uh, he extends... No, he's 12th. He's just no, got past Simas Vada. Yeah, another one. So there we go. Moving back up the order still. <laughs> uh, words fail me. Here he is. It's, uh, and you run out of superlatives. He goes for the 11th place move now. He's just past the world champion. Absolutely phenomenal from Alex Powell. Almost upstaging Joe Turney's efforts. I'm gonna, phenomenal. I'm going to be keeping an eye on the virtual championship here to see if he can maintain his championship lead as he goes through. He's currently uh, got 96 when he last crossed the lap. He'll cross the lap again. It will update. And there you could just see, on a dry, like, how on earth has he done that? He was outside of his cart, restarting it, while the rest of the field were coming around nearly on the start-finish line. Half a minute back from everybody well, else yeah, as well. Exactly. So that's just astonishing. And now here he is, in behind David Walter, trying to get into 10th position. This is just an, a phenomenal drive from Alex Powell under the circumstances. So they continue on. Nakamura Berta is now 4.4 seconds back from Joe Turney with a lap and a half to go. Oh, Alex, Alex Powell's going for it on Walter. Can't get through, but yes, Joe Turney only needs to find six tenths of a second now to be guaranteed the victory. Well, this would be disastrous here and there down the inside. Powell gets it done again. Another one gets past David Walter. And Volta not able to do anything here. And look at Pau there. It just it turns in. You see him turn the steering wheel, and it just turns with it, doesn't it? That setup, pretty solid. It was a shame that we didn't see him go away. And Eichmann oh, now no! with a technical no! flag. No, not Eichmann's. Oh. After all that hard work, he made up 26 positions as well. Devastating for Ian Eichmann's. What? A oh, all that effort, and it just goes up in a technical flag. He will not be allowed to take his eighth position. That is such a shame. Joe Turney, with two sectors to go, has to find four tenths of a second to be guaranteed the win here. So this is just Joe Turney on a Joe Turney day doing Joe Turney things. This is just phenomenal. 51st in time qualifying. The gap has come up to 4.9 at the first sector split.
if it goes above five in the second sector split, and he only needs to find another couple of tenths to do that, then Joe Turney is staring victory in the face almost no matter what happens. He comes through at the top of the hill. It's 5.3 seconds, even with the warning flag for his move on his teammate. Joe Turney is going to come through. He made a mistake there, though. Careful, Joe. Oh, did he lose the time there? Ooh, did this, he lose the time? This is going to be tight at the flag. We'll have to see. Joe Turney comes out of the final turn and crosses the finish line in the lead. But has that mistake cost him the time that he needed to win the race guaranteed? Across the line comes Nakamura. Oh, 4.7! Oh, it 4. did! 4.7! Oh, For the moment, Nakamura Berta is your winner. Oh, my goodness. What a way to end the day here at Trinitz. So for the moment, Joe Turney was the first to cross the line, but because of his warning flag penalty, at this moment in time, Nakamura Berta, who is currently under investigation himself, is the race winner. What a confusing end to the race. Well, <laughs> I mean, how on earth are we gonna sort <laughs> this one out? There might be a delay here for the podium somewhat, but we'll see what happens at the end of this one. This race is far from over, but on track, Joe Turney for the for Great Britain in the 201 takes the win after 25 laps of racing. With that warning flag though, the five second time penalty, Kian Nakamura Berta technically would win, but it's also himself under investigation. Gomez in third could finish this one in P2. And, well, Nakamura Berta, actually on our time screens, just dropped down the order. He's still there, he's there, still on second place. So, it's turning from Nakamura Berta, Gomez, Stolchimanis, Ty from Lammers, Pastrowski, Bianco, Powell, who recovered back into the top 10 from David Volta, from Morgato, Simasvara, and Karanta, Costa and Buknovic, who round out the top 15. The recovery job at the end of the weekend begins. What a final, the rest of the grid. Tunyon, Nice, Scriven, Molnar, Dominitsky, Govisto, Gladish, en uh, Eichmanns, Kolnagi, Vinevsky, Strauven, Poulain, Chu, and Tarvanichkal, all retirements from this race. Once again, we lost nearly half the grid in that one. Pavan was also a retirement. McLaughlin, Kamenik, Buzar, Blum, Bergstrom, and of course, uh, Tezra, uh, Teresa Babichkova, sorry. For the Teps Racing Team not starting the final. And well, what a way to end a weekend here in the Czech Republic at Trinich at the Steel Ring. Here's a look then at the start. And again, the drama started early. Powell and Pavan spinning at turn one. McLaughlin going off as well in sympathy and more drama in the back of shot as well. As a nose cone getting whipped off there by Keanu Blum. And I believe Guillaume Buzar involved in that one. Then later on as well, we would see the comings together of the 2 3 1 just on track, who did manage to keep going as well out on track. So, uh, Melik Visto getting involved in that one. Then the battle for the race lead kicked off as Gomez and Nakamura Berta fighting for position. This is where it came in towards that yellow flag moment where the question mark came in. Solchiman is trying to get involved in that one, but Gomez would retake the lead. Then they would come down the start finish straight. Yellow flags were out in this corner here. They stay behind. They go past the incident and then round the outside, he gets the switch back and then comes back and there the overtake before the green, the question mark comes out. But crucially, Stolchimanis also tries to go for the move as well. Nathan Ty then tried to get involved and dives down the inside for the Soda Cut team, ending this race in P5 after gaining two positions. He got included with that one as Joe Turney started to make the moves. This was the moment that Joe Turney received the warning flag with contact with uh, his teammate Thomas Strauven, but it did not phase Joe Turney, who would continue to overtake left, right, and center around the steel ring international circuit. We then take the lead of the race later on as Strauven and Ty still continue to battle. Strauven later on in the race would retire, who I think with a mechanical issue. And again, this moment here, just sandwiching. It was so lucky that that wasn't the moment there that ended Strauven's race. Stolchimanis and Nathan Ty, very close. Vinevsky got punted by Tarvinichel at that point there. And then later on, Tarvinichel would retire, I think, from front-end damage after that incident. 
then Turney would take the lead of the race with, again, the beautiful switchback move that he gained through that top section as Powell then came back on the recovery. Remember, the driver who stopped at the start, got out of his car, restarted it, lost 30 seconds to the entire field, and then came back to then get up all the way within the top 10, finishing in P9. Unbelievable. But nothing would stop this man, Joe Turney. And now James Geidel for RGMMC will bring the trophies forward to the podium for third position for the United Kingdom, Kian Nakamura Berta. And in second position for Italy, Gabriel Gomez. But your race winner here at the Steel Ring from the United Kingdom, Joe Turney! And for the winning team for Car Republic Motorsport, Rickard Kyle! A fantastic podium here at the Steel Ring. It's double bubble for Dino Chiesa's boys and a fabulous performance. Let's get all three drivers onto the podium here at the Steel Ring. A week before Eurovision, Ukraine and the United Kingdom on the top step of the podium. That seems fairly just, doesn't it? Absolutely brilliant stuff as our drivers celebrate on the OK Senior Podium. Ladies and gentlemen, Kieran Nakamura Berta, Gabriel Gomez, and your race winner, Joe Turney! And so now comes the moment the drivers have all been savouring and waiting for in fantastic fashion here at the Steel Ring. It's time for Kian, Gabriel and Joe to get busy with the physics! Amazing stuff from our three captains of the ship here at Trinetch. Oh, you got car a wet, Joe. All right, you're going to get the laundry bill for that lion. Dear, oh dear. What do you wash lions in? I don't know, but uh, I think Kian and Joe are going to get a very tasty cleaning bill. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, you only get to celebrate at the steel ring in Champions of the Future once a year. So what a fabulous run for Joe, for Gabriel, and for Kian. And excellent stuff. I'm going to see if I can get in there and have a quick word with Joe Turney. Let's see if we can have a fabulous situation. They're going to have a quick picture. I won't interrupt that. There we go. They'll have a quick picture, and then I'll get in there and have a word with Joe Turney in fantastic fashion. There we go, Joe. Let's bring you to the top step of the podium once again. Well, Joe, it's been uh, quite a tough week, hasn't it? I think on Thursday... You being there 51st in time qualifying, the win was pretty much off your mind at that moment. Yeah, I think so. I did a big mistake in qualifying that ruined the weekend from that point. But uh, lucky with the weather in the end. Uh, I think if it was dry, it wouldn't have been like that. So uh, lucky with the weather, perfect setup from the team and, and managed to bring it home. And you kind of led the way around the outside for those fantastic moves, trying to get as much water into the treads as possible. And that is basically what brought you forward. Yeah, I think early on I found some lines that worked a bit better than the tight ones, so uh, that paired with the cart working was, was enough to win. So now still very much in the hunt as you head to Rodby in Denmark for the next round of the Champions of the Future. You must be very positive about how things are going to go there as well. Yeah, for sure. I just need to sort out the quality, less mistakes next time, and hopefully uh, we can do the same again. Terrific stuff. Thanks, Joe. Great performance. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your race winner, Joe Turney! Woo!